1969, we oh, we went to New York from London for two for almost two two years on a Harkness Fellowship school mm. thing. Lived on the roof of the Chelsea Hotel, yeah. which was amazing. Yeah. He ran away and went to Fiji, and Aki and I joined him in Fiji about a month or two after we'd finished tidying up in New York and London, yeah. and stayed in Fiji for about eight months or something, and then came here. Right. In 69? In the very end of 69, and we came to Lavender Bay completely by chance. We went, Aki was really sick of being moved around and making friends and then moving. We came to visit a friend who had the downstairs flat in this house, a, a painter called Roland Schlick. And they said the flat upstairs was about to become vacant, that it had a couple of very old people living in it. And we went up to look at it. It was like, oh, very gloomy and dark. And it had funny wallpaper with edges, you know, kind of borders around oh, okay. the place and lino on the floor and lots of rooms. But uh, I mean, it just seemed like we just looked out there and saw the bay, basically. Yeah. So we grabbed it and then got quite friendly with the owner. It was an old gentleman that had a few houses in Paddington. And I think his sister had left him his house. So he'd never lived here and he wasn't emotional about it, attached. So he said when it came up for sale, if he decided to sell it, we could have first option. So in 1974, we bought it got a mortgage, yeah. which was remarkable because banks didn't give mortgages to artists, but Brett had had a couple of shows and because he'd shown in London and New York, yeah. Yeah, that was impressive enough to, obviously, they thought we'd be able to pay the mortgage off, so they gave us a mortgage. And then it was still two flats? so and then Yeah, yeah, it stayed two flats for the first four years because we moved in here in, in 1970. Yeah. And then after 74, when we bought it, we started you know, knocking down walls and building towers and... Yeah. And, and so um, the artist downstairs, Roland, he moved? Brett ended up with a studio right. downstairs, most of it, and Aki had her bedroom and bathroom downstairs. Right. So, yeah, so uh, we, we, we moved pretty fast to um, knock down walls and things. Mm. Who built the tower? Um, a guy that was um, working around at, at the Gasworks studio as a boat builder. Oh, OK. Below the Gasworks... There used to be quite a few boat builders around there, um, and he was a New Zealand guy, um, just a lone man, you know. Um, and he came, and he was a good, very good bricky, and he came and he built it brick by brick, wow. starting from the bottom, working his way up to the top. Okay, that's great. With us saying, no, 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 make it absolutely straight-sided, you know, just take it in a little bit at the top, a bit okay. of sculpture. And if you look at the end of the American Dream, I mean, if you go to the pop show and see the end of that, you'll see a house on the edge of the water with a tower. And we couldn't, we were going to build it in Fiji. Oh, okay. Which was, you know, Brett's idea was to go to paradise, having been in New York and getting stressed out for two years. Yeah. But so, the tower, so that's how he got, that's how he got his tower right. that he dreamed of having okay. attached to this house. It made sense because the staircases and things had been taken out from the house. Yeah. And they're not that big, these houses. You put a staircase back inside, you know, I mean a major staircase, not mm. a spiral, yeah. but a major up and down staircase, which the other, most of the other houses in the row have done it, put them back in, I think, and reconnected the two floors. Yeah. We just didn't want to lose the floor space. No. So we built the tower and put the spiral staircase in that. So some of the changes that you've made it's very much like your canvas, the house. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, it was, it's been done piecemeal. Yeah. Um, when we first came here, it was, I think I described it before, very dark, very gloomy, wallpaper uh, with borders. And um, so first of all, we stripped it and just painted, painted the walls white. Then we started taking out the walls, more or less as soon as we bought the house and cut the hole in the ceiling over there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we, and we had a, a metal ladder, straight up and down kind of fire escape ladder oh that gosh. went very narrow, very straight. It went straight down from there to the top. That was the only access point to the bedroom at that stage. It, I wouldn't have said it was the most um, comfortable idea we ever had. But um, anyway, it gave us access to the floor and we really needed it because the three of us squashed in here and a studio space yeah. was 
you know, small. This, uh, this part here, this main, main room here was our sitting room and we had a platform on the floor which was made, <laughs> made from um, the mattress that we brought back with us on the ship from Fiji that we'd had in the house in Fiji. Um, and cushions on top of the big cushions that a friend of mine made for me and I covered them in velvet, black and a kind of earthy orange colour. So that, that was all the furniture basically we had. That, so we started taking out the walls and ended up with a bit more furniture. That over there going, that um, long skinny window there where the Buddhas are was a doorway out to the veranda and it had, okay. was half lead lighted and half wood so it had some kind of rather dreary kind of design you know lead light design mm. in there to let a little bit of light in through the red and green of the waratah or something whatever was on there and um that went out to the veranda which was very narrow only half the width it is now okay. just went across and was completely closed in with windows you couldn't open because they were just stuck and the bottom half of it was fibro. I always assumed that they'd been open balconies um, along there, because some of them still had them at the other end, the open balconies. Well, the Storia house, the, which was just yeah. three along, um, had open balconies. So I think this one did too. There was a door in the middle and then two side panels, all with lead lights, okay. and took those out so to let some more light in, put a bit of chicken wire across that opening, and we had birds on the veranda because it was so rotten you couldn't really oh. use it safely. So we just filled it up with birds and plants. Like your own pet birds? Mm, well we bought, Brett wanted some, some fantail pigeons so we got those, fantail doves. Um, Joel Ellenberg when he was here had a crow, yeah. a pet crow that used to march around. Then we got some parrots which unfortunately ate every single plant in sight of course. So I let them go, the parrots, and then the pigeons, I really wanted them to go when we opened up the balcony, but they kept coming back for years and I'd put them in cardboard boxes and drive 500 miles and they'd be home well before I was home, so. Solid wall there, which is the first wall to come down. Solid wall across there um, with another door into it and, and that became our bedroom. Um, this was really sitting room and studio for a while until Brett found the Gasworks studio and moved um, the main studio there. And then when we bought the house, he also had downstairs, or most of downstairs. Where that Buddha drawing is hanging over there, and there's a, you can see there's a beam across the top of that thing. That used to be a, a fireplace, but when the, when the um, tower was built, we had to take that out, the chimney and everything. So it's got a chimney on the top now. Oh, okay. Um, which, which um, North Sydney Council said I had to reconstruct, so it's oh. up there, but it doesn't get used anymore. It's there oh, because, right. so the roof, that part of the roof is the same as it's always been. In a way we were, uh, people will hate me for this, but in, the, in a way we were very lucky because we did a lot of this major stuff before they didn't heritage list these houses until about 19... 79 or something, rather 78. And we'd already done the tower <laughs> and widened the balcony and put the skylight in, which they'd given us permission to do. Right. And we'd, it had all been properly engineered and everything. And so now those bits have been listed. Mm. And there's a lot of um, memorial stuff, like even in the tower. I had put black dots in the tower where the stairs, each of the stairs used to be for the spiral staircase. Painted, uh, we painted the house white as soon as we started, well, right. as soon as we got in here, and, and sanded the floors. I, I've never lived anywhere that isn't white. You know, painters mostly want white walls. Right. Because it's, they're, they're really just supposed to be kind of, there. I've been mean, apart from throwing, you know, really loving the light, and that's why the floor's white too. I mean, I just like this thing of, the actual house being a canvas for things on top of it, yeah. or in it. Um, well, I always did the house. I mean, you know, he just made a mess right. and painted it. So he always painted what I set up for him to paint. Yeah. 
Was it like we didn't have any disagreements about the house on the whole. We'll go, we'll go upstairs so you yeah. can film it and then you two can follow okay. and have a look to see yes, if you want right. to do anything up there. Otherwise, we'll go and look downstairs. I had that copper thing made because um, it's like the, it's like balcony too, same design as Brett's balcony too, which was just invented. This was a kind of weird pantry thing, and there was a thing that looked like it might have had a fuel stove over the corner there when the Schlicks were here still. They used this as their kitchen, I think. So this is all new that I've just done recently. Oh, okay. This is all. Much renovations and then this courtyard was kind of like concrete with an old wash tub out the side so those stone walls and things they're always been there but you see the entrance to the house used to be down here through through the front door was there where the tower was this is all the foundations down here now. So okay. these stone walls are the, actually the foundations of the house. There was none of this. This has all been invented in the last 18 years. We started literally, it was the hardest, heaviest work you can imagine. We were literally pulling out tons of rubbish and weeds and falling down the hill. There's a whole lot of early photographs of it. <laughs> this, this was completely covered in weeds and rubbish down there was just full of the most appalling rubbish of all time. And that all of these paths and things have come later. Um, a lot of them are just by watching the way people want to walk, you know. You just watch, you get desire lines as the gardeners call them. Because I'm going to name most of the paths and things in this garden after artists that were around. Um, 1969, Roland Schlicht and wife Diana and two daughters on the bottom floor of number one. Upstairs, Brett and Wendy Whiteley and Archie Whiteley. Next door, the house was sold to Chrissy Oliver upstairs, Peter Kingston downstairs. Peter Kingston ended up owning both floors. That house there was Tim and Sharon Storia and their two sons, Luke and Ben. That house is converted from a boarding house back into a family home. 